Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Nantucket. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, uh, as many of you know, I do elder law at a firm called Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations at the Salt Marsh, you know that Frank and Mary's uh, goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Nantucket, that means they don't want to leave. They love it here. And so the purpose of this show is to really introduce you to a variety of people and the programs that you need to know about as a senior or would be interested in as, as a senior if you identify with the situation of Frank and Mary. So as you may know, my wonderful co-host, which I, who I, whom I somehow convinced to do this many, well, a couple of years ago now is Allison Forsgren, because she just seems to know everybody. So I've asked Allison to find folks um, who, they, who she believes would really be of interest, and we've, she's done this consistently. So Allison, whom do we have today? Well, today we have Phyllis Rappaport. Um, it has been um, quite a process in bringing what is going to be a wonderful um, Zoom event, a virtual event, to Nantucket, um, and it's thanks to Phyllis and Marguerite Davis um, for helping me pull this together, helping us pull this together. Um, Phyllis is the co-founder and treasurer of Cure Alzheimer's, which is a which is dedicated to research. Um, they're a nonprofit organization dedicated to funding research with the highest probability of preventing, slowing, or reversing Alzheimer's disease, which is um, happening. Um, we are bringing to this lecture, Ron Peterson, Ronald Peterson, who is a is a leading world famous Alzheimer's researcher, and um, Phyllis helped us put it together. Um, so, Phyllis, um, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about? Well, no, Arthur, you do your gig. Oh, see, she makes me do this at the beginning. So I always ask folks how they ended up in Nantucket, because of course, as opposed to Allison, you know, a lot of us kind of drifted in from various places and, and, and but it, of course fell in love with it and ended up staying there. So Phyllis, how did you find your way to here from wherever, where, where, where were you or where are you and, and, and why are you, that sounds very cosmic, but how, why are you here? So I've lived most of my life in Boston and uh, my husband and I, well, I came here first in 1969. Uh, my husband and I have come here frequently since the 70s. And we bought our house in Sconset in 96. So we've had a full-time home here. By full-time, I mean full-time summer home here since 1996. So is it, and so are you, are you still here just summers or so that you you, you re, retain your, your home in the Boston area or have you, have you actually picked up sticks and, and, and moved? We haven't picked up sticks exactly. We still have a home and office in Boston, but we also live in Stewart, Florida most of the year. We're on Nantucket from sometime in May till close to November. So it's it's great that you're here, and I think one of the things that Nantucket is blessed with is you, you, a lot of folks like you who you know have really are invested in in Nantucket and, and are spending quite a bit of time here, and therefore the, for the benefit of a lot of folks who are here, um, they can really kind of take advantage of the knowledge of what's going on in a whole lot of other places. So thank you very much for being here, Allison. Um, and so Phyllis, can you tell us a little bit about? Um, Cure Alzheimer's in general and this wonderful Zoom virtual lecture that will be coming up on the 26th. Can you tell us a little sure. bit about Ron? Sure. Well, I'll start by talking about Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Cure Alzheimer's Fund was started in 2004 by three families, my husband and myself, Jerry and Phyllis Rappaport, Jackie and Jeff Morby, and Henry and Allison McCants. Uh, Jeff and Jackie live on Martha's Vineyard, and um, Henry and Allison live on Fisher's Island off of Connecticut during the summer, so we're all kind of on different islands. And in fact, shortly after we started, we were raising money for this important work, and we had cocktail parties on each of the three islands. So I invited our friends on Nantucket to 
meet with our lead scientist, Rudy Tansy, who is still our lead scientist. And he came back and did a Geshki lecture five years ago. So people on Nantucket have had some introduction to who we are and what we do. We started in 2004 because there was very little talk of Alzheimer's. Um, Henry's wife had Alzheimer's. And of course, he was very interested in doing something. Jeff and Jackie were interested in the brain. Jackie had family members with Alzheimer's. And somehow we all converged and ended up meeting Rudy Tansy for different reasons. Um, my husband and I had often, well, we still do fund research in neurologic disease and mental illness. And I happened to meet Rudy in 2003. And when I met him, I thought, oh my gosh, this is one disease I don't want. And my generation, the boomer generation, is going to break the bank when we all, when many of us have it. So my husband and I um, committed funding to Rudy. And at the same time, Henry and Jeff were committed to creating a foundation, as I was. And we joined forces. And we put together a dream team of scientists. Henry McCants and Jackie Morby are venture capitalists, and they approach anything with find the best people and let them do their thing. So we asked Rudy to put together a dream team of scientists, and we closely followed the research from day one. Dr. Peterson is coming to our event um, on August 26th, and he's been a member of this dream team for probably the last 10 of the 15 years. Dr. Peterson is director of the Alzheimer's Disease Research Center at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And he's a clinician and a researcher. He focuses on cognitive changes in normal aging, as well as cognitive changes in a variety of disorders. Um, including Alzheimer's disease. And sometimes people ask, what's the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's disease? And Alzheimer's disease is um, the largest population of people with dementia. And Dr. Peterson uh, has a world-class uh, clinic which focuses on neuroimaging and biomarkers to identify people in their life cycle who are approaching dementia. What he will um, focus on is some of his own work and how he has expanded his understanding of cognitive disorders through these means. Cure Alzheimer's Fund has 34 leading research scientists today, and we have them collaborate on their research. So, Dr. Peterson is an important clinician focused on aging. We also have geneticists, Rudy Tansy is a geneticist, um, and we have people with lots of different backgrounds, and they talk together. The collaboration that they do is essential. So they really all are the leading, on the leading edge of this disease, and in the 15 years that we've existed, we're not known by the world Cure Alzheimer's Fund, but we have changed the world's understanding of this disease. There was a lot of confusion about what created it. In fact, there was a lot of disagreement among scientists about how it's created. And I think there's a lot more people who've, who've converged on how this happens and why it happens. And we now we've called our talk Reasons for Hope because there are therapies in clinical trials. I can keep talking because this is, as you can see, very- No, no, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's fascinating and it's so wonderful to hear um, talk about hope because that's not what a lot of people think when they are living with someone with the disease or even living around someone with the disease. And there are a lot of stigmas still. Um, my my father was diagnosed at the Mayo Clinic um, back a long time ago in 2002 
before they really knew what, I mean, he ended up having a, a really unusual form of dementia related to Parkinson's, but, you know, nonetheless, the, the, the treatment and the stigma around travel and around, um, and around other things about living in a community were, were difficult to, to handle. Um, and so getting communities prepared and um, for what's happening, because it is really a world health crisis. Um, and until we find some way to, you know, make some changes in how we deal with it. I mean, that's why I'm so excited to have a leading researcher and then you with your knowledge about how we got here. So please do say more. Well, I'll say a little bit more about the research. Um, so one of the major advances was caused by something we call Alzheimer's in a dish. A lot of the research um, about human disease is conducted on mice. And in fact, mice brains are different than human brains. And uh, Dr. Rudy Tanzi and one of his colleagues created something called Alzheimer's in a dish. And it's a gel substance that replicates the human brain and allows us to create Alzheimer's in that human brain and to do thousands of tests based on existing FDA approved drugs to see what impact they might have on an Alzheimer's ridden brain. So that's been an enormous advance. Another thing we've come to understand, and right when we started, we had a mantra, early detection, early prevention. You know, in heart disease, um, we know because of research that cholesterol is a huge factor and people do what they can to prevent heart disease in Alzheimer's when we first started, we just had people showing symptoms and we had no idea, one, when it started, how it started or how to prevent it. And now we do have a, we, we do understand there are substances very much like cholesterol that could be addressed in a therapeutic way. But we've also learned that the disease probably starts 20 years before symptoms. That's a long time. And one of, um, one of the issues is that until maybe a year ago, NIH did not fund research on pre-existing conditions for Alzheimer's. All the research they funded was based on people who had it. And we actually worked very hard with a consortium at the federal level to change that policy. So NIH can fund research back 20 years going forward. So you can see, I find this all very exciting. Um, I'm not a scientist, but I like to follow what we do closely. And we meet with our scientists once a year in person. They all talk to each other frequently during the year. And every time we meet with our scientists, they've already advanced dramatically in their understanding of how that works. On August 26th, Dr. Peterson will explain a lot of what we understand today and what the possibilities are in existing clinical trials and some of the future clinical trials that we're aware of. It, it, first, now that you've explained this and talked about some of the background, I recall why I heard of this organization, because I do a lot of work also in Martha's Vineyard, and I had heard of it from folks over there. Um, and, I, and what's really exciting about what you described, I mean, it, it speaks to the, the, the fact that you can develop a collaboration and support a collaboration like you've described today, and the people can be all over the place. Whereas in the old days, you know, it would have been the Mayo Clinic and you needed to be at the Mayo Clinic, but now they're kind of, they're everywhere, you know? Right. And, 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 the, and the notion that you're, as you're describing it, that, that there may be some pre-symptomatic ways that people can get a can get a handle on this is also really that's really exciting could, could you could you once again i know that this is going to get talked about next week could you just could you speak to that a little bit to the to the to this notion of things that may be that you're that that aren't guaranteed at this point but that you think that you're investigating as things that may be possible for for folks who are 
you know, Frank and Mary who are still fine, you know, who think they're still fine, but, you know, it may have trouble down the road. Right. Well, actually, Dr. Peterson is a wonderful person to be talking about the preclinical because he studies people with mild impairment, no, you know, normal brain, impaired brains mildly, and then more severe. So neuroimaging is a way of taking pictures in the brain. But there are also um, biochemical substances that uh, change as somebody is becoming cognitively impaired. So those are both areas for opportunity for early detection. And we just received um, news, although I don't have the detailed information, that there is um, a blood test that might be effective in determining Alzheimer's disease. And I can tell you that our lead scientists were very excited about it. You know, Alzheimer's research, there's a lot of stuff that comes out in the news and newspapers that sometimes is false. You can't believe everything you read and hear. Um, I, I won't go into some of the false stuff, but, and, and I'm lucky because I can write to our lead scientists and say, what about this? What about that? And very often they say, forget it, not true, myth. But when we read the article about the blood test, our scientists were very excited, which means they believe that this is viable. I want to mention one other important Nantucket connection. So we have, now we're at a run rate of donating about $20 million a year to the research. We've donated over $110 million um, in our history. And all the money that people give goes directly to research because the founders are three families and other people who are unnamed pay all the overhead expenses. And I want to tell you that of the founders and the people who are unnamed and on our board of directors, there are several important residents, longtime residents of Nantucket. So Nantucket is involved in important ways um, that is not represented by me personally. Um, and um, at this point, I'd like to mention the um, Marguerite Davis, who's been, um, who contacted me actually, um, as I am um, working on, you know, working in the this, in the elder fields, um, and she contacted me to try to pull something together for what was supposed to be year of the Nantucket year, 2020 year of the Nantucket senior. Um, so the plan was to actually bring Dr. Perlman here to Nantucket and have him do a lecture at the Yacht Club, um, which completely folded, you know, just as we were really developing steam to have that happen. Um, but Marguerite, it was her idea, it was her contacts through Phyllis and your Alzheimer's that are bringing this together. And she too has a long history on Nantucket and, you know, is facing challenges that um, that this disease brings to not only family, but to caregivers and to um, the community. So I really thank Marguerite, who wasn't able to join us today for her great idea. And um, I'd like to make sure that you all are invited as viewers of this show to join in to the um, virtual lecture or virtual event, we call it a lecture is not necessarily what it is. Um, it's it's going to be August 26th, that's a Wednesday. It's gonna begin at 5 p.m. And when you sign up on the link in the um, on the invite, you'll get um, a response that has a, a Zoom invitation and click on it and join. Um, it's going to be um, a host and then the guest speaker, Ron Peterson, and then hopefully a question and answer afterward. Um, so we have about 100 people already and expect more um, and can handle more. So it would be great for everyone to join um, and to learn more about this very fascinating subject. Um, and a hopeful, it's a hopeful talk as well. So um, please, please do join us. That's the point. It's really a hopeful thing, you know, and I just wanted to I wanted to close. I know this has been I think this has been educational for a lot of people. And the point of this, and, and you know, Allison talked to me about this literally earlier this week. And we really want to thank uh, D. White from NCTV and the many folks there who helped us kind of put together this program so quickly so that people could be aware of this. But 
you know, I know that th this year, I ironically, this was supposed to be the year of the senior 2020 in Nantucket. And it's because of COVID become, you know, the year of the scary, the scary year for the senior. And, and folks have been so focused on COVID that they have been not thinking about some other things like these issues, which are really important. And I think that to, to, to hopefully this program can, you know, continue to get folks now that they are kind of a little more calm about the immediate COVID issues to be seeing what's going on, perhaps perhaps some to be joining in this in in supporting this this incredible effort that has been uh, has already shaped the course of Alzheimer's. And Phyllis Rappaport, you know, I, I know any closing words before we go, but I just wanted to, as a non Nantucket person, say thank you. This is really special. Another understanding that we uncovered is that there are really three stages of Alzheimer's. So there's a very uh, early stage when there are very moderate symptoms. There's an advanced stage where it's quite clear that something's wrong with the individual. And then there's the advanced stage where the individual's probably gone from understanding that they're in the present time and present world. And we understand that that third stage, there's huge inflammation in the brain. So that becomes the target for any therapies we might do. Earlier stages, uh, moderate, there may be therapies that we can do to prevent moderate and mild uh, symptoms from becoming full blown. So we've really identified several opportunities along the way in, in uncovering our research. Thank you, Allison, for doing this. Any final words? Um, Yes, actually, um, you know, one thing that, that that is going to be discussed at the uh, at this event is the fact that it, um, clinical trials are a really important way to have research that is productive, and um, there are ways that anyone can sign up. I mean, if you, especially knowing that 20 years prior to coming down with any symptoms, you could be affected by Alzheimer's, um, why not join a study today? That can you know that can help you learn more about it. So I think I, I think that there will be ways to sign up for um, various um, study groups um, offered there, and I and I hope so. And I've already signed up. So, but Great. Phyllis, Great. thank you. I'm, I'm I'm it's a pleasure to meet you, and um, I so appreciate bringing this really world-renowned researcher to Nantucket to share good news. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you very much, Allison, for doing this. As as usual, folks, we hope you've enjoyed the show. We hope that you will that you will connect in if you're interested next week. Uh, and and uh, in more long run, we will see you on the uh, uh, next installment of Frank and Mary here in Nantucket. Thank you very much.